I think I did my traditional my traditional Christmas playing. I, I got all the sharps <laughs> messed up because there's so many sharps. Then when we ba went back to uh, the key of G, I was playing sharps when I should have been playing naturals. And then when we did that Joy to the World, I didn't know Joy to the World was written in cut time. Is it always written in cut time? But it's written, in, it's too form. So then without running through it from the start, I should have ran through it mentally. You know, go, da, 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 da. When you get two thirds of the way through and I want to do the beginning and it's, it's cut time, I don't even know where I was beginning. So I get brother all messed up on the time. Well, he wasn't messed up, but I was messed up until we get started. Then in the middle, there's this big hole without a hole, which we naturally always sing, which it goes to four four, and then, uh, then it's all messed up. <laughs> Not that you were messed up. I no, I, I just do the traditional way. Like, it's uh, the traditional way. Some hymnals there is a formata right there. So. Yeah, you know what? If you did it the way it's written, I don't think we, we would all miss this. It would have been a misstep. We would all break our tongues. <laughs> we would all break our tongues. Yeah, yeah. all right. We're on uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. <clears throat> but Christmas music is very pretty, and they and it's written from a long time ago. When they wrote that stuff a long time ago, they used a lot of sharps back then. What I have to do is move it a half a step or so, and you're back to the would make it a lot easier, you know, at least for me. But it's the way it is. That one song, there's a there, you shift gears every four, every note gets a shift, which is fine. I I, I can read that. But. But I made a lot of uh, errors. Uh, lot. Did you hear him, Mrs. T? Did you hear some clues? Yeah. <coughs> and they're written in the, I wrote them in right. They're written in right. I'm just not accustomed to reading those certain chords. <laughs> written right just played wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Written right played wrong. All right, it is the end of the year. We are going to preach that this morning. Uh, our title is The End. <coughs> Uh, the year is over. Uh, for some of you, it's been a good year. <coughs> now, if it hasn't been a good year spiritually, it's not been a good year. I mean, you could have a good year carnally, but that's just, uh, you know, for the ash heap of history. But you want it to be a good spiritual year. And I, I know that for some of you, you may not know what to do spiritually or how to uh, use up your time or do what to do with your time or what, what should I do? And I think we're going to get into that uh, today. First Peter 4, verse 7. We are actually going to do the entire ver verse. <clears throat> um, I'll just go ahead and read it. I'm sure uh, we don't have a lot of verses today, probably between 20 and 30 verses. And uh, man, I wrote this probably when I was sick, and I, I didn't write it on Friday because of uh, the showing. My sister was come, she had come in, and I normally do this on a Friday. I did this on a Thursday in uh, this past week. And um, anyway, Father, bless our sermon today and our final service. I think of all those that are present today that. We would lay these things to our hearts and uh, that it would be a, a, a new year and a growing experience and fruitful year coming up now. All those that cannot be with us, we pray for them, for their soon healing and return to us. Those that have forsaken the church, we pray for them to uh, come back to the church. Those who had asked at the funeral when service started and are not here, we pray for them in their conviction of be, being here and and maybe returning we pray for that for them and we know that you are mighty and we put all these things in your hands and for your divine will to be done in Christ's name I pray amen and amen first Peter chapter 4 verse 7 the end and that's specifically what we're going to focus on and we do not have an outline today so you don't have to worry about that but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. The end. You know, things do come to an end. As in the end of the year. This is the end of 
2018. I mean, uh, folks, uh, the world was going to come to an end when? When was the world going to come to an end? The year 2000, Y2K, you know. 18 years ago, it was supposed to come to an end. The computers wouldn't be able to reset. And uh, uh, we were all going to be roaming around the earth, uh, killing one another. We were in the survival mode. Uh, folks, I, I didn't want to, but we put the shelves up in the basement, loaded up with food, and, uh, and so on and so forth. We did, we did a lot of that. And some of the almost Christian radio station was really centered around that trash. And on and on it went, and you know, none, none, of, the, none of the above happened. And uh, the grocery store, I would go up uh, to uh, stop, I don't know if it was Stop and Shop at the time, what is it called up here now? Oh, it's Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle, Giant Eagle. you go up to Giant Eagle to get groceries. It was a ghost town up there for a whole month. It was a ghost town, because everybody had loaded up their basement with food, you know. Do we still have anything uh, Mark 1900s? No? Finally cleared all that out of there. You know, we, we do find occasionally. You know. uh, at the end, as in the end of the year. The end of the school year. I mean, you kids are looking forward to the end of the school year, aren't you? Right? You want to get out. The end of the school year. The end of a project. The end, at the end of a movie. Now, jokingly, I say at the, at the end of a movie. I, I do this a lot. You know, uh, you, know, you see these movies over and over, to, uh, over again. And so we, we actually look at the props. I look at the props. I look at how things were built. Folks, they did, uh, uh, they built um, uh, stuff for real. It's not a lot of just pretend front, some of that stuff. And when MGM and Warner Brothers destroyed all, they bulldozed a lot of, a lot of fancy stuff. Walker China, we heard, uh, we're trying to get, uh, the wife does Walker China now, and I want to get this set for her. Like it or not, lady, I'm going to get it for you. And uh, I found out from the local that had gotten all, all that was out of the dump in Walker, China, that's from Bedford, MGM bought a lot of that. So that in the movie sets, the other day uh, we were, I was watching a movie, I said, that looks like that, the one Herald, that's the, uh, the uh, name of the, of the design and all. I said, that looks like your, uh, the China that you want. Yeah, it, it went worldwide. So a lot of that stuff that's in the sets are, uh, it's the real deal, you know. And some of it was Walker China. But I say, uh, jokingly I say this at the end of a movie, when the hero dies, you know, somebody gets killed, I said, don't, don't worry about it, he's in the next movie. You know, he really <laughs> made the kill. You know, I, I do that, I mean, uh, yeah, now rest assured, he, did, he wasn't killed. And uh, he, he's okay. He'll be, in the, he'll be in the next movie. He made a couple more movies after this. And he really didn't die. He's only pretending. Oh, you know, something going on in the movie. I said, now don't worry. This is all just pretend. It's all pretend. And when you start realizing it, and you realize how pretend it is, uh, uh, we were watching something last night. I said, man, I could have been an actor. I mean, I could do that. I could. I don't know if I could do line for line like they do, but I, I could. I could do that. I, I, I really could have done that. <clears throat> but it's really not the end, as you know, as the movie says, the end. And you can. I always say the end, just you know, while the just before the final uh, song goes up, and then the words come up. You could because you could guess when the end happens. The Bible says, surely there is an end. That is. What one possesses carnally now, there will be an end. What one is concerned with, what one is consumed with, and generally we are consumed with that. That is the verse found in Proverbs 23, verse 18. <coughs> Excuse me, for surely there's an end. That is an end to what one possesses. Now, the next part of the verse, though, and, the, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. That's the, the, the remainder of the verse. That is what one is promised. What's coming up, what one is promised, what's promised to come. Now verse, uh, what our verse is today, 1 Peter 4, verse 7, <clears throat> kind of goes along at the, the, it means the same thing, but the end of all things is at hand. What, what's right now? Uh, but ye therefore so, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. The end of this life 
<coughs> what it what it, what it really pre preaches, and, and forgive me if I'm coughing, but I have I have this thing, you know, I just uh, can't seem to shake it, and I will probably in a week or two. The end of this life and the promise of a better life to come. The heart of a real Christian is really taken off from this world. It our our hearts are set here, but our life as a real Christian should our heart should not be set here. But take it off from the world and it should be set heavenward. Uh, Colossians chapter th 3 doesn't say that's not in my sermon, it just comes to me around. Set your affections on things above, right? Not things on, on this earth. Yet, <coughs> there's still in this flesh, still in this flesh, so much of the flesh hanging to it. And that flesh that hangs on to this life, that's the flesh that you and I have, it, it's, it's as an anchor which pulls all of us downward so that all that is in this life is what consumes man. And we tend to, we tend to do that. You know, we may get our eyes heavenward and then, you know, we, we're, then we finally look down again and we get consumed with this life. Unless that life be caught up or wrapped up in that which would lift up that life into the next life. So I want the thrust of this message is to make our life coming up here in 2019, that more of that type of a life, upward. That is why three things need to be bound upon the Christian to lift them up to higher heights. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. That's the second part of our verse. Those are the th uh, three things. Soberness, watchfulness, and prayerfulness. If you want a little outline, I'm not preaching on those things. But soberness, watchfulness, and prayerfulness would lift us up and have our eyes heavenward. These three duties of a Christian would lift him spiritually that he be heaven bound instead of bound to this earth. The desire of a man uh, what you desire. Whatever it is you desire is what you do. What, whatever's, whatever's here, whatever you desire, that's what you're going to do. The desire of a man, the doing of a man, and the destiny of a man dictates as to what drives the man forward. Either to one of two places, this life or the next. Our Lord always commands us to look to the other side. Always points us heavenward. Our Lord does that. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable, the Bible says. I read this at the gravesite. Uh, uh, only some of these verses that I'm going to read here today. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. We live as if there will be no end to this life. We, we, that's how we live. We, we live like there really isn't going to be an end to this life. But folks, it, uh, the, the curtain is going to fall. As if, as if this life is the only life worth living. Like this is the only life worth living. The only life worth living. What is living this life worth? What is living this life worth? It is as laying up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Now folks, you might say, well, why are you engraving your grandchildren's names in stainless steel? I'm going to put them on the stone wall the kids built. Well, that's a good question. I got to ask myself right now what the. Uh, on all this stone the kids put up, I, I really want ivy, English ivy grow, growing all over. And you know, the, the thought was well, what if, the, what if we move and the, the next person doesn't want any of the names on there? Now they can, do, they, can do one, they can do a few things. They can either add names to it, they could do that if they were eclectic and artistic and inventive. Or they could just be a, a clod and rip them all off. You do whatever you want. It's not mine anymore. I told the wife, I said, well, if, if ivy grows over all of it and hides it, they'll live there for 10 or 20 years, and then they'll, all of a sudden they'll look behind them, they'll say, hey, there's names behind here. 
you know, make this great discovery. Or I could look at those names and say, man, I, uh, I want to see all those names in heaven. And, and do my best to win them to Jesus. I mean, man, you do with it, you do with, with your time, with your time, and I guess, I, listen folks, we all have our responsibilities in our goals in life. But what is living this life worth to most? It is as laying up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Now my wife had said, uh, well, for that ivy to grow up, that's going to be 50 or 100 years from now. The Lord is coming back before that. Is he? We can only hope, brother. He could come back while I'm preaching. He may come back in two, three, four hundred years from now. We don't know. I know uh, those that would guess the date, you know, preachers that are dead, they'd get this, they get this. When their date didn't come up, they said, get ready, brothers, we're here for the long haul. So, what's worth living? It's as laying up for yourselves treasures upon earth, and our Lord talks about it, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. And all those that live such a life will live a worthless life. You know, one thing my... my uh, Mother taught me, yeah, I did, there's all kinds of stuff she taught me that I didn't include. I mean, my wife and I talk about this. My mother taught me not to hang on to my stuff. Because she hung on to her stuff. Mm -hmm. But she taught me a valuable lesson. The other day, I bought a plate, a handmade plate. It's handmade. You can tell it's handmade. It's not perfectly shaped. It's a little warped. It's got... Uh, it's got uh, uh, weaving on it and, and all. And, and Corey was there. And she was there, oh, this is two or three days ago or four days ago. She said, oh, I really like this plate. I really like this plate. It reminds me of my country. I said, it's yours. What are we hanging on to it for? And I told her, if you break it, don't tell me, just throw it away. <laughs> if you damage it, because we damaged it on the way up, a, a certain kind of a damage, if you damage it, give it to me and I'll JB weld it. Because I did a little JB weld on it. And I said, they, were, they told us you can't serve food on that plate. I said, I said, Corey, you put crackers and cheese on there and you entertain your Peruvian friends and your Mexican friends and you just have a good time. Otherwise, it's just going to lay there at our house. There's got one of these big sea turtles on it. I said, do you have sea turtles in your country? She said, yeah, at the coast at Lima, where, where Lima, Lima, where uh, she lived. You know, that's where they have those turtles. Man, man, I give it away, man. Amen. Piece by piece. And those that live for this life and store up treasures upon this earth, they consider not that there's an end of this life. Even death shall be no more. There's an end of this life. Even death will end. Psalm 9 verse 6 says, O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. There's a perpetual end to destructions. Not just an end, but a perpetual end. As if our Redeemer asks of death itself in the grave, where is thy sting? Where is thy victory? As if standing over the devil and mocking him. The devil himself, for Christ had destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. And that's what will have a perpetual end. The spoiler is spoiled, and he who made men captive is led into captivity himself. You know, I gave these... Uh, my mother had a definite testimony of when she had gotten saved. I personally preached, gave a testimony the day she got saved, 30 some years ago. And uh, captive, uh, folks, she's not captive, they're just the body, it's an empty shell. I have absolutely no reason to ever go to a cemetery, none other than being asked. Uh, the wife and I, we, don't, we just don't go back. After we got saved, we never go back. Only if somebody insists and, and wants us to point to something, we might do that. But uh, folks, uh, 
you know, she's absent from the body and present with the Lord. Amen. He who held the power of death has come to a perpetual end that we may now have the promise of eternal life. The very first place eternal life is named in the Bible, the very first place it is named in the Bible is found in John 3.15. The verse before 3.16. Verse 315 is almost identical to verse 316. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. <clears throat> the promise which is given in the past should not perish but have eternal life. And the possession that you and I have right now, the present, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Right now the possession of it you and I have. But we don't experience the power of it until the future. And I will raise him up at the last day. But the end of all things is at hand, as our verse says. The end. This is the end of this year. This life will be over. And what have you done about it? I ask, what have you done about it this past year? What have you done? It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. But lay up for yourselves treasures. And I read all those verses. Most people, that's what we do. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. You know, this younger generation today, they don't want things. They, they would prefer to live off plastic and paper plates. That's what they prefer. That, that's their preference. You say, well, they're, they're not hanging on to this life. But folks, they're not safe. They're not banking on the next. Just because they're not hanging on here doesn't mean they're hanging on there. It goes in waves. 50 years from now, man, it'll come back if the Lord tears it. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Christian, you know, lately I had somebody tell me, you know, life is a waste. Everything, everything to do is a waste. Now, I, I have come through this. Whereas a Christian, and before I got saved, it, it doesn't matter what I do. Why am I doing this? I said the other day, why, why even cut the grass? I have to have a reason or a purpose. And it's when Tammy walked through as a little girl, she said, the grass is tick. It's itching my legs. You know, she was in shorts. It's itching my legs. I said, at least I have a purpose now to cut the grass. Otherwise, there's no purpose for anything. And this Christian said, I have nothing to do. Nothing really to live for. Nothing worth living for. No purpose in life. You know, and these treasures. He said, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. What are these treasures? What are these treasures? How do I get these treasures into heaven? How do I get them there? It says lay them up there. Whatever we earn here, as far as I would assume, the Lord takes those treasures and stores them for us up there and protects them for us. What are these treasures I am to labor for? The end. It's nothing new, just something we are to be reminded of. It's the end of the year. We're, I, I'm going to remind you of these things. And to be heaven bound instead of earth bound. We are to be sober, as it says, this is the way to correct this problem. Be sober and watch unto prayer. Sober up. The beginning of a new year is upon us, and the world, world is like the chains of Jacob Marley binding us to this earth. What are these treasures? These treasures. Ah, these treasures. And, and I'll go ahead and I'll just, I decided I'm just going to go there. I'll, I'll preach on the crowns. As five of these treasures. These treasures. The crowns which one can earn which is the work of gold and silver and precious stones. <coughs> the work which shall be tried by fire as to what sort it is. 
And so I thought, well, I'll, be, I'll just, and, and this is where we'll preach, and that begin with the five crowns. I'll name them off. The incorruptible, and maybe not in order as you would have them. The incorruptible crown, the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of glory that fadeth not away, and the crown of rejoicing. So what are these crowns? You, you know what? We make, we make Christianity more difficult than it really is. Now, I'll outline. now, here's an outline. I'm not going to preach this outline, but I'll say the outline. The incorruptible crown. You, you want something to do, something worth living for, where you're going to lay up a treasure in heaven. This is what the incorruptible, and it's going to be alliterated so we can really get this. The incorruptible crown is living like Jesus. It's that simple. Living like Jesus. The crown of righteousness, the, the, the loving of his appearing, is loving Christ. The incorruptible crown is living like Christ. The crown of righteousness is loving Christ. The crown of life, right? We call that when uh, uh, you're martyred, you could be martyred. It, it's, it's equal to the martyr's crown is I'll give my life for Christ. Dedicating your life for Christ. What does it say? By resisting temptation. I'll give my life for Christ. The crown of glory, which is given there in 1 uh, Peter 5, right? About learning. Boy, there's the L word. Is learning of Christ. You want, you, you want to earn a reward and have something to do? Well, then the learning of Christ. Are we not to grow in the knowledge of Christ? And our fifth one, the crown of rejoicing. The soul winner's crown. Well, give me the L word for that. Is leading others to Christ. See how simple it is? You've got plenty to do, man. You around other people, you see other people, lead them to Jesus. What do you think the billboard's about? Why did I save those, those banners and put them up next door? Why, why, why do you put a sign out in your yard? You know, well, I stopped doing this. Well, that's too bad. People might think I'm wacko. Well, I hope people think that I love Jesus. Yeah, he's that religious guy. It is the end. The end of this year. And a person may take inventory of their holdings. I mean, we do that. We, you count what's in your bank account. You, you can't tell me you don't. I do. You take inventory. A person takes inventory of their holdings. We all do for the most part. In this case, the right hand knows what the left hand is doing. Jesus said, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. But for you and I, we generally, the right hand knows what the left hand is doing. Most slowly and methodically amass their fortune. I'm talking about here, down here on this earth. For others that do that, they hang on to risky investments. They, they, they invest in risky investments. They want to make up for lost time or what they've lost. They, they take risky investments, which ultimately, I'll tell you where this will land, ultimately will drive them deeper into bankruptcy. You know, just recently, uh, my, my brother-in-law, my sister was in, my brother, I said, when did Dennis die? He was a... Uh, uh, he ran a department at Sears. He took early retirement. They started a, uh, took, bought a hardware store. This is over a period of 20 years. You know, just recently, uh, it, is it, uh, Sears is filing Chapter 11. Bankruptcy. It's because they, and, 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 and you that do this stuff or invest in ultimately in these risky things, 
It'll drive you deeper into bankruptcy. For they possess not the courage to let go such investments. They won't let those investments go. The earth as we know it right now, it will come to its end. What we have right now. The earth also in the works that are therein shall be burned up, the Bible says. Not that the earth shall end, for it is a world without end. Right? He's going to burn it all up and create a new heaven and a new earth. But we look for a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. But Christ has come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled, he says. And Satan has begun that fire. Satan kindled that fire to claim Jesus as his first victim, only to find himself the victim in Christ the victor. There's a lot of interesting things we could say about fire. Folks, he's going to burn this place up. I want you to think about it. The fire has been kindled and one day will consume this earth. In the wintertime, you may, if you have a fireplace, you start a fire in there to do what? To get warm. So a fire can be started. I hope to build a fire in your life right now about this. He's going to burn this up. Warms that which is cold. If you've grown cold to Jesus, if you've grown cold to Jesus, I hope that this fire, this fire will warm you up so you'll be warm to Christ. If you've grown cold towards Christ, may he warm that which is cold. Fire purifies what is unclean. Right, it burns that off, that our works for Christ will be untainted from the world. All the stuff that holds you back, that that will be burned off. It consumes what is evil, removes all that stands in your way of serving Christ, kind of repeating that. Whatever stands in your way, the Lord wants to burn that off in 2019. Fire, it will burn up this earth. Fire is, uh, you know, the other day, man, I pulled something out of that lower oven of that woman. She's got this double oven. I pulled something out of that, and what did I do? I went down there and I touched it. It was cooking down there. I think it was a pizza. It was what? It was hot. And what did I do? I, I did drop it, but man, it, it left it. It's already healed up now. But it left a mark. You know, the wife gets these burn marks. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You grab something that's hot, the hot iron, you, you grab that, what do you do? You drop it. Burn up. Fire's hot. So what is it you possess? Is it something that's carnal? What you're holding on? The things of this life, what do you do when you hold something that is hot? Say it louder, brother. You let it go. So I say this, he's going to burn this life up. So let go of this life and take hold of heaven, amen. Let go of this life. And take hold of heaven. I anticipate, it, if it's not this year, it could be next year. Our building will be paid off. We have one billboard, and I'd like that to grow to two. I'd like it to, to grow to a hundred all over Cleveland. How are you going to get there? Don't ask me. Ask Jesus. He'll figure it out. So let go of this life and take hold of heaven. Christ said, the end is not by and by. By and by. It is not immediate. Divine patience is long-suffering. It is slowly accomplished. You now it takes time for all this. Abraham waited 25 years. 
Israel waited 400 years for the promise. The coming of Christ required a period of 4,000 years to be fulfilled. It takes time. But folks, how old did my mother live? 98. Man, let's just call it what it is. She lived to be 100. She lived to be 100. Well, that isn't 400, and that's not 4,000 that I just read off. She lived to be 100. You going to live to be 100? <laughs> My sister says yes. That's, but man at best has been given three score and ten. My brother-in-law was in. We were talking about my father-in-law, his father. He said, well, he died at 76. I said, oh, I, I've got nine years left. F folks, that's not far-fetched. That's not far-fetched. I could have two years left. I could end up with a big old cancer ball, you know. I passed it nine years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you would have died nine years ago. Yes. Folks, we're not guaranteed this. Man at best has been given three score and ten, and by reason of strength, another ten. And making it past that 80 mark is rare, folks. So it says in 1 Chronicles 22. Arise, therefore, and be doing, and the Lord be with thee. What's our text? For the end of all things is at hand. Some of us have more time than others. But what, what, what did the wicked witch say? She takes that hourglass, and, says, and it ain't long, my pretty. It ain't long, my pretty. Isn't that what she says? Something like that. It ain't long, my pretty. For the end of all things is at hand. Psalm 39, 4 says this, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days. It is the Lord and the Lord only who knows the end of a man's life. It is he, it is he who has lit the light of life within a man. And only the Lord can take it again. As cloth is measured in inches, you know, we go down south to the, not Joanne Fabrics, not to the warehouse, there's another place they sell cloth. You know, and they go like this, and they have the tables to you, and you can measure it out. As cloth is measured in inches, so life is measured out to man. As our Lord said of this earthly life, we one day will say the same. As Jesus said, we will say the same. It is finished. Remember, you are but a step between life and death. Well, I wanted to bring that up. I, I don't think I said it for, but you know, there's things I forget. My mother was told by her mother to stay in that school, first day of school, till I come for you. Teacher left, all the kids left. She lived across the street, and I said she was no closer from here to that wall between the school and home. And she stayed in that school and wouldn't walk across the street to go home. <laughs> and she waited a long time all alone. Finally, her mother came over to get her. She said, why didn't you just walk home? It was a lonely road. I mean, we're talking just a little old past horse and buggy days. There were no cars really on the street. Why didn't you go home? Well, you told me to stay here till till I came. She did, right? But basically, between and the, the point was this life and going home was the next life. She's but one step away, just across the street. We're a step between life and death. <clears throat> when a person is saved, it is referred to as the beginning. That's what it's referred to. The Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. And as surely there was a beginning, there will be an ending. As the twice told ending in Ezekiel, there's a twice told ending. An end has come! The end has come! It watches for thee, behold, it has come. 
the end will come. How can I know these things? How can I know these things? You know, I said uh, yesterday at the funeral, you know, I opened up with, well, may as well, I thought, I said, may as well get this over with, you know, these lessons, you know, you know basically, our, the first thing I said, you're, you're, you're all born in the devil's family, and the only way out of that is to get into God's family, and, and that is by adoption. May as well get this out of the way, you're all damn hell, you know. How can I know these things? Now, you know, you say, how can you say, I, my job was just to tell the truth. And how can I know these things? How are such things revealed to one and not to another? How? How is it revealed to me and not to somebody else? David writes this, Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Here. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. When one enters the book that's in your lap. till you enter into this book that's in your lap. It is as if one has entered into the holy place where dwells the God of eternity. The place where the seeing eye can view things invisible in there. That is when he who sees such things can say, the, re the rest of this verse, till I went into the sanctuary. Then, under, I, then understood I there end. It's all about the end. Then I understood their end. So only by being in church and only by being in this book do we know the facts. There are those whose end is bitter as wormwood. That's a verse, folks. And those whose end are as the ways of death. But for us who are Christ, he loves us unto the end. By the way, does he love us more, I, I weigh this, does he love us more or less? Does, did his love peak and did it go down and up and down? Now think about it. No greater love. When he died on that cross is when he loved us the most. He still loves us. But when he loved us the most, when his love for us peaked, when he died on that cross. He loves us unto the end. <clears throat> <clears throat> but for us, for Christ, he loves us unto the end. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. It is a love which passeth knowledge. He loved us for Christ who had an end to accomplish for his own, his death, in which was the full effect of his love. Amen. For no greater love hath a man than this. That a man laid down his life for his friends. His death was not the end of his love for us. For he still loves us. But it was the culmination of his love. Now folks, I don't know what you learned from this message. I hope you learned something to go home with. Those five crowns. Living for Christ. Loving Christ, learning of Christ, leading someone else to Christ, giving your life for Christ. You can start right there. You know what? You got plenty to do now for 2019. Now what are you going to do about it? But the end of all things is at hand. And what can you do about it? How's the verse go? But the end of all things is at hand, and what can you do about it? Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. That's what you can do about it. Get your eyes off this world, for it will end. And get your eyes on Jesus in heaven. The heart of a real Christian is really taken off from the world. And it is set heavenward. Now, folks, I didn't say anything here that you didn't already know. You know these things. You just need to be reminded of these things. All of us do.
Now let's do something about it for 2019. Best regards in Christ, your pastor. Amen and amen. Shake hands before leaving.